Hey guys, Zogi Saint here and welcome to the channel. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day and I want to share with you guys my updated bunny build. Now, the goal of this build for me was to take our old build, which is mainly a high voltage crit build, and then take all of that without losing damage, but maintaining full uptime on the speed of light so we can run around at super speed while still maintaining the massive range and damage of high voltage. And I think we have actually come up with a pretty decent build now. We are able to run between 50 seconds to over a minute without killing any enemies depending on some buffs we have from the invasion tree obviously when the season ends and those invasion buffs do go away and we get the new ones for the season two we can still run for 50 seconds without killing a single enemy so i think that's pretty good and we've basically achieved permanent runtime because there's not really any content we're going to be running for 50 seconds between you know mob spawns and actually killing mobs and then picking up those mp orbs to carry on your ultimate running speed so without further ado let's just hop straight in and i'll show you guys all the differences and the changes we made to our previous build so first of all, let's have a look at the mod setup. Now, the main change you guys can see right away is we have maximized conservation as well as strong mentality, giving us a 50.6% skill cost reduction. That's a pretty massive skill cost reduction, and that's going to massively affect your speed of light. As you can see, our MP cost is down to 5.9 per second, and that's really, really good. As with our MP pool, we have 443 MP, so it's quite a bit of MP. We can get even more if we had a better roll on our sensor and the MP recovery in combat on there is also not the greatest. So we could easily increase this and get even better results than what we currently do. The most we got was about 55 seconds without needing a refill. And then back to the mods, we are running three crit mods. So we're running skill concentration for the crit damage and then skill insight for the crit hit rate. Because overall the crit is still the best way to increase your damage even though with these mods on we only achieve a 28% skill crit on bunny. When you do get those skill crits, it's going to make a massive difference and it really helps speed up the bosses at the end of the dungeons if you are just using a bunny and not using weapons. And anything you need where the mobs have a little bit more HP, although you could just completely drop all these crit mods and we could put even more quality of life in there, more HP, more defense, whatever it is you desire. But like I said, I want to be able to run forever and I want to be able to do as much damage as I can. And this is the setup for that. So we have the two blue crit mods and then we use the purple mod emergency measures just because it has a little bit higher crit rate, whereas front lines will give you the opposite where it'll give you higher crit damage but lower crit rates you'll be critting less often but when you do crit you'll crit much higher we prefer to go with the more crit rate just to kind of even out the damage and give us crits more often bringing us up to 28 percent crit rate and then we come over to maximize range and skill expansion helping us achieve that max range of 27 meters on our lightning emission now all of these stats are actually built around high voltage so if you don't have high voltage you won't get the same results as high voltage actually increases the base range as well as the cooldown. So as you guys can see, we have a 20.7 second cooldown and our duration is 21.1 seconds. The way we have it set up, it's gonna cool down like just a few milliseconds before the duration runs out. So we can go ahead and just keep this up permanently with no downtime whatsoever. And the way we've achieved that is with one cooldown mod. So we have focus on electric. I know electric specialist does a little bit more damage, but having it set up like this with high voltage, you need to have a little bit of cooldown somewhere. You could replace this with cooldown on your reactor. So maybe when you're farming reactors, if you get a good reactor with cooldown on it, you could go ahead and change this over to electric specialist as it should give you a little bit more damage. I believe it's 81% electric skill power, whereas this is only 77, but then you do get that 6% cooldown. So you need that little bit of cooldown just to make it permanent. If you don't have the cooldown, that's only going to give you like a second of downtime that you'll be missing out on, but second of downtime is a second of downtime. So we prefer to have it perfectly matching like it does. So get yourself cooldown wherever you can manage it. If you don't have it on your reactor, you want to put it on your mod. Then our other damage mod we are running is singular specialist. Now we have tried doing this in the opposite where we have focus on singular over here and then we have um, electric specialist over there but this actually gives us more damage we believe it is to do with like scaling on the reactor where you kind of don't want to put all eggs in one basket so the more different scaling damage types you have will actually give you more damage than focusing completely on one because i believe there's like diminishing returns i'm not sure the math behind all of it but we did go ahead and test it in the lab so if you don't believe me you can go test it yourself but without testing the lab focus on electric and then singular specialist was giving more damage than what we would get if we put focus on singular and then we put electric specialist we were getting more damage this way and then lastly we have hp amplification ledges for a massive boost in hp and it does give you a negative on shields but shields are so bad anyway and then what you could do as well if you want a little bit more defense you could drop out emergency measures pick something up like spear and shield for like 90 percent defense with a bit of skill power boost you could even go with just flat increase hp or flat increase defense if you want you won't be losing too much damage from removing that but i just prefer having more damage and having that higher ceiling with the crit damage and also the crit chance being increased but again if you don't care about that you can go 
for the more comfort. But with this exact build and how we have our components set up, we have been doing all the invasions every single day, no problems. Even those crazy invasions where when you kill a mob, I believe it gives you like 80% defense reduction for like 30 seconds. So basically anytime you kill a mob, you'll be taking a massive amount of damage. Whoever made those modifiers, you need to go see a therapist because that's masochistic behavior there. So I'm just letting you know if that's what you like, sure, but you need to go see a therapist, brother. And then last but not least, before we move on the sub module, you can pick anything. Just make sure it is leveled up because it will give you the increased capacity as well as putting a form on there. I believe they are all the M slots. You can just put an M slot on there and you can put in there any one of these long distance maneuvering, mid air maneuvering, shock punch, tonfer, whatever you want. Just put something in there. I just prefer long distance maneuvering for the bunny tech as well as the mid air maneuvering is also really good and bunny tech works with it pretty good as well. Just long distance gives you two charges for those longer dungeons with like jumping puzzles and stuff. You have to wait on mid air maneuvering sometimes. And now let's move over to our reactor. Now this reactor could be a little bit better. However, I would say range is pretty important because if you don't have range on the reactor, you won't actually max out your range and you'll be losing a whole two meters. That might not sound like much, but you need this to even get to 25 meters because we have found something recently that the range on the tooltip is actually lying to us by two meters. I could prove this to you guys by showing you the radius of here is 27 meters, but if we go in game, we bring out the afterglow and we see there the range right on the right. Let's go up to 20. Let's make it some resource real quick before we do this. Get the resource and we'll go to 27 meters. So we'll go to 26 and just as it ticks over 27 right there. So we activate our V and it's not hitting. It will only hit when you get into 25 meters. You see 25 meters, you need to be right on it. And there we are getting it to hit on 25 meters. So the tooltip is actually lying to you. Now, if you don't have the reactor with range on it, then this tooltip over here is going to drop down from 27 down to 25. But obviously, since I just demonstrated that that is lying by two meters, it's actually going to go down to 23 meters. That's why I would suggest picking up range on the reactor just to max it out. You don't need that. I mean, two meters is not a crazy amount, but two meters is two meters. So if you want the maximum range, you want to get it on your reactor as well. And then for the second roll, I would suggest going maybe electrical skill boost or singular skill boost as that is going to boost your overall damage. Whereas getting the skill crit damage like me is only going to boost your ceiling. So our big hits and our crits are going to be higher, but our overall like the white numbers and the non crit is going to be lower if we don't have something like an electric or a singular boost. So optimum rolls, I would say range, singular or electrical boost if you want to get that. And there's also the argument for skill cost reduction on the reactor, but it's such a small amount of skill cost reduction. I don't believe giving up range or damage would actually benefit that skill cost as the way we have our setup. We can easily run for almost a minute without killing any enemies and also without having mp collector as you guys saw on the build before we don't have mp collector we have strong mentality and maximized conservation because those together is just going to give you much more mp we did actually try switching this out with enlightenment for the bigger mp pool and i believe with that we maintain 39 seconds of runtime versus 50 to 55 seconds so as you can see strong mentality just does win out over there so reducing the skill cost overall it's going to make it better than increasing your MP or in getting MP collector. MP collector, we don't really need it as we can run for like 50 to 55 seconds before needing to kill a mob. Now let's have a look at our components. We are running two piece annihilation and we're running two piece supernova. Now you don't need to run any of these. You could just go with as much defense and HP as you can. The most important thing you need to have is on your sense, you need to have MP recovery in combat, max MP. And then on your memory, you need to have MP recovery modifier. Now, those are the most important roles. Whatever components you get, you can go ahead and put those on. With the Supernova, you can see there, this is the best combo we could come up by still running Supernova two-piece and then Annihilation two-piece. Just for that little bit of skill duration, that skill duration doesn't actually make or break the build. If you don't have Annihilation two-piece without losing that skill duration, you get about a 0.7 second downtime on your AOE. So it's not that you need it, but it does just round it out and makes everything so much nicer as well as the two pieces of Annihilation having pretty good stats. We have HP there, max shield, shield recovery. And then on top, we have defense, max HP and fire res. So those are pretty tanky components altogether. Both of them have defense and HP on. And then for the supernova, the reason running the two piece is for the electrical skill power modifier, but it's such a small amount. Like I said before, these don't really matter that much. You could just go for like max HP and defense. As long as you have MP recovery in combat, max MP and MP recovery modifier. Those are very important. Everything else is just what you have the best of. And then for the weapon on bunny, there is a little bit of weapon tech. We can go after brisk walk will increase your movement speed on hit. So when you hit an enemy or even an object, it's going to give you 10% movement speed 
speed for five seconds on a 15 second cooldown so it does help and make it feel a little bit fast but if you don't feel like you need all that movement speed you can go for defense master when defeating an enemy you gain 128 percent defense that's a massive amount of defense i believe our defense goes up to like 45 or 50 thousand when we actually have this on so it's a massive boost in defense and it's also about similar cooldown with brisk walk being on a 15 second cooldown but it does last for 10 seconds and this does actually work on your weapon so you can switch between those two depending on what you need i honestly just run brisk walk as it does feel nice to get that little bit of speed boost every now and then and what you could do is you could take this a step further because you can actually put brisk walk on a different weapon as well and you can switch between them as they don't share cooldowns for the different weapon types so you see this is special rounds so you can go ahead and put brisk walk on that one so that way you can min max and pretty much have it up all the time although i wouldn't really go that far as it's just too much work at the end of the day for like a small little boost in movement speed so run with it on your main weapon and set and forget just go ahead run bunny is your weapon you don't need a weapon build that's why we just use whatever weapon corresponds to our reactor and then last but not least let's talk about the inversion reinforcements and some of these do actually help our bunny build quite a bit this one will be actually giving us maximum mp increase as well as negative skill effect range now the negative skill effect range is not that bad as it's only a five percent boost at the end of it all but the maximum mp we're getting is 20 percent maximum mp now this is when defeating enemies so the test we ran before with the 50 seconds to 55 seconds was not accounting for this we just ran that in the lab without killing an enemy so when we're actually in battle we could easily run even longer as this will give us a 20 percent boost on our maximum mp so it's just going to be like the whole enlightenment mod plus a little bit more as the blue mod only gives you 15.2 percent mp i believe this is basically the whole blue mod extra on top of the skill reduction we have so that's why i say you can pretty much just run infinitely and it's really nice to pick this one up so you can practically keep this one up the whole time now if you don't care about the mp over there you could go for the first one just to give you a little bit of a boost in hp but like i said run in there super speed kill them before they can kill you and you don't need any hp and defense but personal preference that is what we run and then the only other perk that matters to us is selective neuro simulation this will grant you one of three effects every 60 seconds so you either get a 60 percent chance to recover your mp by 13 percent of your maximum mp 30 percent chance for a 23 percent of your maximum hp or a 10 percent chance to recover your mp by 32 percent of max mp and hp by 7.8 percent of your max hp so that's why we like to run this one so that's world proc every 60 seconds and all of those are good as all of them gives you a nice juicy amount of mp just to make you run a little bit longer and then the bottom one giving you a little bit of hp as well and then the last perk we just have anything selected for now but when you are running invasions it'll be between these depending on the invasion you are fighting as you see there when you are attacking the legion of immortality it grants you incoming damage modifier of minus 15 percent so we're taking 15 percent less damage in those invasions and we have all three of the different legions of here immortality truth and darkness so go ahead and choose any one of those three depending on the invasions you are running but we run all the invasions without even changing our at all but that's going to be it for the build guys hopefully you enjoyed it and it helps you out if it does please drop a like and a sub on the channel it helps me out so much if you guys have any questions shoot them down below in the comments join the discord as well the community is growing there every single day we're almost up to 400 members now if you're looking for people to play with or just talk about tfd hop in there and, and just games in general but thank you guys so much for watching i'm gonna love you and leave you and i'll catch you guys on the streams as well as the next video what you say now run free Dive into the sky Hear the